Well, hey, folks, and good evening, and welcome to the Morse May 2022 Adventures Day 7. Um, hopefully, unlike last night, uh, my phone won't get overheated and shut down halfway through the uh, video, um, but it doesn't seem to be as warm as it was last night, and I still haven't figured, <laughs> figured that out. Um, and again, I don't know if it's an upgrade that Facebook's done, or if it's just this phone, but... I can go to my photos app and this video will show up in my library on my camera and all that kind of stuff but yet when i go to facebook to upload the pictures the video is not an option to upload so that's why i'm having to do it separately until i can find somebody that's a little more savvy with facebook and uh an android type phone than what i am all right but that's all okay because we got it i mean i posted anyway okay um I don't know what the reason is. I, I got another warning today. I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to mention exactly what um, RV app it was, group. Um, but apparently, and I'm not posting the video there because I've already been told I couldn't do scriptures, religion, okay? So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But I got a warning again yesterday that uh, my post on that had been removed. But yet I go on online and it's there. I don't know, something about the comment or what, it, I, I, I don't know what it is. But anyway, hopefully, uh, you know, hey, it's in God's hands, okay? Had a great day today. Uh, we did sleep in a little bit and got a, somewhat of a late start. And after breakfast, we headed over to Gatlinburg, uh, which was our intentions anyway. And I had, like I, I said uh, in last night's video that was done this morning, <laughs> I told the wife, I said, babe, I said, every time we've been here, you know, I've wanted to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this, I want to do that. Whatever we're going to do, it's because you want to. So she wanted to go to Gatlinburg, and we did. All right? And, of course, uh, as I said in my, in, my, in, in my pictures, you know, no visit, no trip to Charleston or Gatlinburg is complete without a stopping at Kilwins and having Toto Coconut. I did. You see the pictures. Good stuff. Uh, so uh, we enjoyed our time over there. And this is the week before Memorial Day, right? I mean, Memorial Day weekend is the unquote, quote, uh, official start of summer. Let me tell you what. Uh, going down the highway in Gatlinburg was just like going down. Well, it was just like coming in yesterday uh, here in Pigeon Ford in, in uh, Sevierville. It's just like uh, going down 17 in Myrtle Beach. It's stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. Tourist season has started. People are getting out. COVID, for all intents and purposes, is over. All right. Yes, we're going to have some flare-ups, and there are going to be some bumps and roses, but basically it's over, in my opinion. Okay. Um, but, hey, uh, had a good time in, in, in Gatlinburg and, uh, you know, got our traditional picture in front of the Gatlinburg sign. And so, you know, they've, they've, uh, some other shops and things have opened up, uh, in the same buildings that other shops that we were looking for, you know, so, so in other words, the older shops have gone on business, new shops have come in. In addition to that, some of the older buildings have been torn down and new ones have been built or are being built. Uh, the last time we were here was, uh, two years ago. Um... Next month, two years ago is next month because we left uh, we left Havelock on the 26th of June, two years ago, and uh, we spent the night uh, of the 26th uh, in in Waynesville, and then the next like four, three, four nights we spent here in Pigeon Ford. So, yeah, it's been almost two years exactly. You know, just I mean, well, basically, you know, a year and eleven months. <laughs> some days, okay, uh, since we're here, so you know, there has been some changes, um, and for the good, I suppose. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. The uh, two years ago was shortly after the fire that they had had here. You could see a lot of the devastation in the hills around Gatlinburg and Pigeon Ford. Uh, of course, 
two years ago we went over to Cherokee and and going up that way you could see a lot of the uh, the burnt mountain sizes and all that <coughs> excuse me but uh you know in two years time a lot of the vegetation has grown back and it's it's pretty and uh you know fire i mean we don't like fire no nobody does and when you build a house in the forest you run that risk and i'm sure a lot of property and homes and things of that nature was lost uh, it definitely put a damper on the um, tourist trade for that year that season um, but like i say the, the the next year when we were here it was back up pretty good but then covid was just starting so that kind of dampered things but you know sometimes the forest needs to be burnt for new vegetation and that's why they have controlled burns we, i know they have them back in colorado where i'm from they have them down home in eastern carolina where i'm where we're living now you know controlled burns are one of those things although this was not a controlled burn it was uh, if i remember right it was started by lightning um but it was devastating no doubt about that no doubt but anyway you know gatlinburg has made a a, a comeback it's looking good it's alive and well and we had a good time there we came back uh, now we've been on the road for a week, so, uh, hey, time to do some laundry. So we, so we spent some time here at the RV so the wife could do the laundry, All right? Um, and then we went out and, uh, went to the Apple Barn. Uh, and those of you that are not familiar with this, when you do visit this area, the Apple Barn is one of those places that you must stop. All right. Uh, they've got the grill. And they've got the restaurant. The menus are the same. It's just the seating is a little bit different. Uh, we walked down to the restaurant and found out that it was the same. So then we did some shopping and went and ate after that. And we ate at the grill like we normally do. But the menus are the same. Outstanding. Oh, my, my. I had, uh, I can't remember what I had, you know, six years ago or longer when my sister and brother-in-law came out, that was the first time we ate there. I don't remember what I had then. But uh, last year, uh, I think I had the country, or two years ago, I had the country fried steak. This year, I had uh, the pork chops, and I tell you, they're just up there on that list. You can check them off. You know, excellent, excellent, excellent. The uh, the chef's uh, kitchen staff is, is outstanding. And then, uh, uh, you know, uh, what you have, Mama? You had... Uh, Chicken. You had... Uh, grilled cheese chicken or something what was it barbecue chicken with cheese and barbecue chicken bacon. with cheese and bacon okay uh and we both brought a portion home i mean they're that large okay uh, so we both brought uh brought a portion home and then of course afterwards uh i got my apple ice cream oh excuse me uh, we got fried apple pies we got some uh apple fritter mix uh we got some apple bread, got some apple, got some recipes, <laughs> yes, 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 recipes, uh, I might share some, <laughs> but it's a good time, and uh, then afterwards, uh, you know, of course, we went over to the ice cream shop and and uh, had a deep dish apple pie ice cream sandwich with uh, apple cinnamon cookies, so, you know. It was good, really, good, really good. But you know, that's uh, that was today. All right, now we're back at the house. Uh, um, you know, we're gonna uh, probably turn in a little bit early. Well, probably not because uh, tomorrow's trip might be if we go really slow, about two hours. I think it's more like about an hour and fifteen minutes or something like that. Because we're headed towards Knoxville, but we're not going quite to Knoxville. For the uh, FMCA rally, so you know it's going to be a short trip tomorrow, and then next Saturday, a week from today, we'll be back right here on our way home. Um, it's, which means Sunday is going to be a long, long drive, but uh, we got to get home for the uh, Memorial Day picnic that uh, our church sponsors uh, in the uh, city park. You know, open to the public, so we've got to get back for that. All right, um, doing some of uh, some of Christ's work, you know. Uh, serving the community and uh, showing God's love to all. To all. all right. But that's, that was today. Okay. 
I'm not sure there'll be a whole lot of pictures tomorrow because, like I say, it's a short way and we're staying at the at the uh, um, fairgrounds. So I'm not sure that's going to be all that uh, enticing for pictures, but then you never know. All right, this is our first time there, so we might be surprised ourselves. And having said that about surprises, you know, uh, let's get on with the scripture, okay? I was talking about the, the community picnic and all that and, and doing... Uh, you know, being the hands and feet and showing Christ's love to the community. Well, let's go right on into uh, to God's word. All right, and uh, today's verse, all right, is Hebrews four sixteen. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Now, this is this is a very pointed scripture, because. Prior to the crucifixion and the death of Christ, if you went into the Holy of Holies, you were immediately killed by the Spirit. The only person who could go in there was the high priest, and he had to be cleansed. Now, there was a ritual that he had to go through to ensure that he was free from sin to enter the presence of God. They even had bells on his ankles and on his robe so that if it quit ringing, they had a rope tied to his feet so they could pull him out because if they went in to get him, then they would die. All right, so it was that sacred. And that, um, well, I can't think of the word, but uh, uh, you know, behind the closed doors, hidden. All right. But when Christ died, when he said it's finished and he died, the curtain going into the Holy of Holies was rent in two. It was, it was ripped apart. Now, the curtain was almost eight inches thick. I don't remember how long it was and how high it was. I think it was about 12 or 14, maybe even maybe even as high as 15 feet. I don't remember, but I remember it was almost eight inches thick. <coughs> <coughs> and it wasn't ripped from the bottom to the top, like somebody had taken it and ripped it from the bottom. It was ripped from the top to the bottom. In other words, Christ, or, or God's Spirit, ripped it. God ripped it because the death of Christ covered, His blood covered all of our sins. So therefore, and that was why I say the, the high priest had to go through all these rituals to make sure he was clean to go into His presence. All right? Well, Christ's blood cleansed us. So now we can boldly go all right with confidence to the throne of grace we don't have to be afraid let us then approach god's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need now another another one you know let us then fear, fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace the throne of god's unmerited favor to us sinners, sinners, that we may receive mercy for all of our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. You know, folks, uh, you know, like I said, with the death of Christ and his cleansing blood, we had now, as as believers, as children of God, those of us that as sinners, right? Okay, because He that knew no sin bore our sins, so that we become sinless through His blood, covered with His blood. It doesn't mean that we're sinless, but we're covered with His blood. So when God looks at us, He looks at His Son's cleansing blood. Okay, and and that grace and that mercy that we can can have. I hope that makes sense to you, because I, I tell friends, I you know, the thing about about being a believer, about being a Christian, being Christ-like, and that's what Christian means, Christ-like, is that we don't, we're not, and even the New Testament, and Peter and Paul both wrote about it, okay, even Christ talked about, you know, going to the Gentiles, and he says, it's not my time yet for them, but it's coming, okay, um, that they boldly, can enter into God's presence. 
All right. So when, and this is what I tell my friends too, that when we're, you know, somebody comes with this, and I said, well, let's just, let's just pray now. Let's, 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 let's go to the throne. You know, we don't have to go through a ritual and, 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 and say, you know, go to the altar and, 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 and do all this ceremony. We, no matter where we are as believers, as Christians, we can say, Father, help me. Father, my brother has a need. Your word tells us two or more gathered together. I am you and you come to me boldly and ask it. It shall be given to you on earth as it is in heaven. So we have that power to boldly go to the throne of God and say through Jesus Christ, we boldly petition this healing, this miracle, this touch, this whatever it may be. It may just be something as a for a child healing his toothache or her toothache or her headache or her or scant knee. To them, that's important. And if it's important to that little child, it's important to God. And you can imagine how much more important something that we as adults have is, is important to God. Okay? So, you know, let's say today's scripture. You know, I love it. Let us therefore boldly come to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and that help in the time of need. Folks, if you don't know Jesus Christ... And you don't have that covering blood that you can come to God's throne and boldly go into the Holy of Holies. Then I encourage you, right now, just invite Jesus to say, Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins and help me and guide me to be a Christian, a worker, a servant for you. That's all it takes. That's something. Is, it don't have to be a big flowery prayer. It just be, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner. And just help me and forgive me and guide me. Holy Spirit, show me what to do. And he will. Folks, y'all be blessed. Um, we will probably watch uh, our, our service back home uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the online here uh, before we leave in the morning. So, But uh, somewhere probably around noon or 1 o'clock we should be in Knoxville. Um, then we'll be back here next Saturday. I don't know what time we'll be getting here. don't know what time we're going to be leaving Knoxville next Saturday morning. But that being said, tomorrow's video uh, will be from Knoxville. And then maybe no pictures. And maybe just a short video. But in whatever, God bless you. Be safe. God loves you. Jesus died for you. Amen.